So well put. And I'm glad to know that it, it, it's not just in your YouTube videos. It's so relatable when you're chatting even here at the India Today Conclave. But I want to understand that piece as well. So when you're planning to monetize, a lot of people try to figure out how do these creators, these YouTubers, and now you've joined the band, how do they make money? And there are several revenue streams. If you could just paint it out for us, right? You, not only do you make money from ads, you also do brand collaborations. And then, of course, there are uh, educational courses as well. So there's, there's a beautiful thing about content that I realize. When you create content and you do get the attention and the effort of individuals viewing you, you can use it for either of two purposes. You can use it to sell something directly, which is what I believe most people end up making a mistake. Because when you sell something directly, eventually people will begin to see that you could be right. And your content will never get that kind of trust or respect that it deserves. The other way to do that is to think of your content as a trust engine and not a sales engine. That's what I do for my business. Every day, I create content. At any point of time, none of that content is ever directed towards, please buy this from me. Those are my ads, which is a completely separate line. All that I'm doing is hopefully adding value to people's life and doing it in a fashion that they build trust in me. And if that happens, then I have this flywheel of digital marketing that just overlays on top of that trust. So a lot of people would see my ads and they would not know who I am. And that's perfectly fine. But if they were to go and look me up, they would see years and years of hopefully good quality content serving a purpose of helping them. Yeah. And that would make them convert. And there are multiple revenue streams that you can unlock through content as a trust engine, which is what I've invented to do. No, absolutely. And while you're talking about all of this, building trust, creating that sort of credible brand, you look back at your corporate career and the time when you're pursuing that PhD and this whole story that you've, that you've got, which, which is fascinating for a lot of us. It's a tumultuous, circuitous sort of story, lots of twists and turns. Do you think that really contributed in building your personal brand? And what is the importance of the brand of Ariku that we now know of? What I selfishly do is I pick up all of my failures and make them into stories. And I'm so grateful that people look at those stories and relate to them. Because in some way, they could have very well said, oh, that's a failure. That's a loser. I shouldn't be listening to that person. I should be listening to everybody who succeeded in life. But I think the way that I project it is, if you think that I've done anything even remotely successful to be here in my life, here are all the points where I faltered and miserably so. So you should never, ever feel that it is game over for you if you find yourself in that. Did I make it to the IITs? No, I didn't. Did I make it to the top university that I wanted to apply to in the US? No, I didn't. Did I make it to the top MBA schools at that point of time? No, I didn't. Did I make it to the top consulting firms that I wanted to get a job out of? No, I didn't. Did I get through the top VCs that I wanted to raise money from? No, I didn't. There were so many aspects in my life that I very selfishly, as a content creator, start picking up and say, I hope that this is something that gives people confidence, inspiration, and feels liberating for them. Millions of Gen Z and millennials who reached out to you, and I know through the pandemic as well, because every couple of days you were doing an Instagram live where people were asking, pouring their hearts out open to you, and you should just get them in on a live session, counsel them, mentor them. And I think that was very candid and very genuine from, from viewing it as a viewer. But what are the top kind of requests you get? Because you build content, basis on what uh, you know, audience insights you're getting. So what are the top requests you get? And from these, everyone's trying to crack the, now millennials are so yesterday. Yeah. Everyone's trying to crack Gen, Gen Z, and Z. you've already cracked it, so give us some insights. I think there are top three things which repeat themselves day in and day out, in no particular order. They are extremely worried about what they will do professionally in their life, because they have so many options that they just cannot process. Unlike the era that perhaps we belong from, where it was an engineer or a doctor or a lawyer or a chartered accountant and so on, whether you liked it or not was a different story altogether, but these were the stable avenues. Now you could technically be a YouTuber and make lots of money, so should you become an engineer or a YouTuber and so on? So career is number one. Number two is making money. Everyone's in a race of making money, and it's very interesting because they want to make money to invest money. They don't want to make money to necessarily spend on sneakers or phones and all of that, while that is definitely part of their plan. But they do want to invest because they believe that that's a smart way of looking at your money and something very different from how their parents did. And number three, perpetual relationships. They're constantly struggling because social media has made it so hard 
to form meaningful relationships that they do not know how to process a breakup. They do not know how to make meaningful friendships. They do not know how to approach strangers and have an interesting conversation. And they keep reaching out saying, hey, I, I do not know, I'm an introvert, and they even, they don't even understand what's the difference between introversion and extroversion and how does that energy level process within themselves. So they're just using blanket words to label themselves, but these would be the three, career, money, and relationships. 